Hello and welcome to High School Basketball on WOSN. Alongside Darren Gilbert, I'm Evan Skilleter, and tonight it's a Northwest Conference showdown between the Crestview Knights and the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Excited to be with you from Crestview, and Darren, two teams just kind of getting started this season, both with one loss. Crestview's already played five games. They're 4-1, 0-1 in the, in the Northwest Conference after losing to Spencerville last weekend, but a good team nonetheless. Well, it's a heck of a matchup, you know, pre-Christmas. Both of these teams were in the upper echelon the last three, four years in the conference, and I know Columbus Grove took a hit with uh, um, a lot of seniors, and, and they're battling some some injuries, so some of their players haven't been playing, but, uh, you know, Chris is not going to make any excuses. Coach Sauter, I'm speaking about, and he's, he's going to lace them up and play, and then you know, Coach Etzler, he's he's uh, done a phenomenal job here since returning back home, and and you know he lost a tough one last week at Spencerville to a really good Spencerville ball club. So, you know, this is an important game heading into 2023 for league play purposes. You know, because you know Crestview with the one loss already, and then Grove, you know, they're sitting at one and zero. That would put them one back. Uh, of Spencerville. Now there's a lot of basketball to be played, partner, but you know, that one leg up to stay one game behind Spencerville right now is, you know, an important contest tonight. Absolutely. We're about ready for tip here as Crestview wearing the white uniforms start out with Gavin Etzler, Mitch Temple, Carson Hunter, Nate Lickley, and Ren Sheets on the other side, Columbus Grove wearing the red uniforms, starting with Zach Reynolds, Trent Barraza, Landon Best, Kyle Hopkins, and Tad Cook. And it is the Bulldogs who start with possession. And we are underway in Crestview. Here's Barraza. Now they go right inside to Tad Cook, who goes up, misses, but the tip in good from Barraza. Barraza averages eight and a half points a game. Zach Reynolds averages eight. Tad Cook averages eight. So a lot of different people that can score for this Columbus Grove team, but it's Barraza that gets things going. More importantly, Cook has really done a great job on the glass. You know, he's really light-footed. This is the first opportunity I've seen him play, and uh, he moves really well. We saw him on the football field, and he's just a monster on the football field, but uh, nice move inside, great tip there by Barraza. And Cook actually the only senior on the roster for Columbus Grove, as they'll inbound following the missed shot and rebound that went out of bounds. Full court pressure from the Knights as Landon Best breaks it, the freshman point guard, and a foul up top early on. That'll be the leader, Gavin Etzler, of this Crestview team with his first foul. Etzler averages around 19 points a game. Most impressively, though, he shoots around 70% from beyond the arc. He's had a heck of a first you know, part of the season. Now the freshman Best in trouble, able to get it up to Cook. Now cuts toward the basket, gets the tipped pass and finishes. Sure was. Nice, nice pass there by Cook, hitting the cutter best, finishing at the rim. Early 4-0 lead for Columbus Grove on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. As Crestview trying to get on the score sheet, but the pass in and out of the hands of Ren Sheets and held possession. That will stay with Crestview. Early substitution as well as Nasir Easterling We'll check in for Sheets. Coach Doug Etzler's squad, four and one on the season. As we said, 0 and one in the Northwest Conference after a loss by two points to Spencerville last week. And there's the three from Etzler who misses. And that pass goes off of Crestview. So it'll be Columbus Grove basketball. You can see that game on WOSN. And Crestview almost able to get nearly a half-court shot to go in at the buzzer. A deep three that went in and out as that pass goes over the top. Cook catches. Cook, nice little pass there. And the shot up and good from Landon Best. Four points for Best, 6 nothing. the Bulldogs lead. Freshman off to a nice start tonight. Four quick points, another assist by Cook. Foul on the pass, number one against the Bulldogs, and they call it against Zach Reynolds. Sure was another substitution for Crestview. 
Coach Edsler's going to the bench early and often. Carson Hunter will throw this in for Crestview from the baseline. Hunter looks over the top, gets it to Isaac Klein, who just checked in. Then he gets it back. Here's Etzler up top, guarded by Barraza. Now the wing. That's Nate Lickley, who was the one that just missed that half-court shot against Spencerville. That shot no good. Another Grove rebound, looking to extend the lead. Floater goes up and a foul. And it looks like they call it on the floor, so it'll be a baseline out of bounds for Columbus Grove as the foul called against Nate Lickley, his first. And we've got an early timeout called by Coach Etzler. His team trails 6 nothing here in the first quarter as we step aside. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. 5.51 to go here in the first quarter, and Coach Etzler, an animated 30-second timeout, which was extended a bit as they worked on the clock. And, Gil, you kind of saw it. Coach Etzler not happy with the early effort from his squad. Yeah, I don't think the players like that extended time during the timeout because Coach Etzler got his point across long before the clock malfunction. Held possession stays with Columbus Grove. It's Kyle Hopkins who will inbound. The sophomore gets it over to Best. It's swung up to Barraza. Barraza, a little hesitation, but nowhere to go. Now goes up around Etzler. Score no good. Nice move, just couldn't finish it. Huh? A little step through, up and under. Lickley sends it inside to Easterling. Backs Cook down, and nowhere to go. That's a really strong That's body to try to back down. Up, wasn't it? Score stays at 6 0. Five minutes and change to go, first quarter. Best to the corner. Three on the way from Best, and it's good. Young man's carrying him in this first quarter, isn't he? Seven of Columbus Grove's nine points. They lead 9 0 on that Hawker drywall scoreboard. Easterling passes over to Isaac Klein. Now Etzler up top, ball swung back to Carson Hunter. Lickley's gonna try a three, he gets it. And Crestview now on the board. It's a big basket right there for Crestview. Crestview, excuse me, that stops the drive on that 9-0 beginning of the game for Grove. Barraza for Columbus Grove. Kind of double teamed momentarily, missed Cook. Open under the basket. Columbus Grove still with possession. Kyle Hopkins out to Best. Best, nice pass on the back door cut. And Zach Reynolds finishes. Again, the freshman with the basketball in his hands. Got the assist on that one. Nice pass, nice finish. Etzler gets inside, closed off nicely by Hopkins. A lot of space for Etzler. He puts it on the deck, gets to the bucket. Left-handed layup, no good. Cook with the rebound, passes ahead, and it's tipped away. Hunter over to Lickley. Lickley, deep three, that's good. Two in a row for Nate Lickley. Gets his team back to within five. Yeah, I'm sure the scouting report, Coach Sauter's got him defending. He's got loose twice. Another backdoor cut, but Lickley knocks it away. He's been big in the last minute. He's going to get another look. Splash! He's in the groove, as not he? He's got the rhythm right now. That's three. That's what they call on fire, partner. 11 to nine now. Columbus Grove trying to stop the bleeding. Up to Barraza, guarded by Etzler. It's amazing what a couple shots will do to your momentum with your basketball team and the effort defensively. Cook posting up inside, instead they swing it around. Three on the way, that's no good. And look who it is, Lickley with the rebound. 
He has three threes, a block, a rebound. In the last few minutes, he's going to try again. Bang! Four for his last four, and he gives the team the lead 12 to 11, and an offensive foul at the other end. Talk about momentum. Yeah, that 9-0 lead got uh, erased real quick on the three-point shot there. A couple substitutions with 2.13 to go first quarter. Your replay is sponsored by Union Bank. I think Coach Etzer is going to pull him out for a break. I sure hope not. That's a no. <laughs> Crestview brings it down. This is Mitch Temple. I assume they're going to give a screen to Lickley at some point here. Here's Etzler. Crestview with the 12 to 11 lead. Lickley thought about it. Instead, the nice pass, and he is stuffing the stat sheet right now. The basket good by Sheets, and it's a 14 to 11 lead. Credit the assist to Nate Lickley. What a heady play by that young man. Now Barraza crosses to his right, loses it going up in the air. Crestview coming the other way, all the way to the basket, and a foul on the way up. Two free throws coming. And Sheets is tired. He asks for a substitution as Jarrett Harding will go to the line. I think they got Evan Sauter on that one to reach in to 5'11 junior. Three fouls against Columbus Grove in the half. Free throw up and good from Jarrett Harding, the 6'2 junior. Kyle Hopkins will check in. Sheets takes a seat, replaced by Carson Hunter. Keegan Baim into the game for Columbus Grove as well. Free throws good, 16 to 11, now the score. Ball in for Landon Best. A token three-quarter court man pressure. Best passes inside, shot up, blocked away. Connor Sheets with the block. Harding up with the layup, no good. Columbus Grove with the rebound. Here's Sauter. Now Best tries to go inside, but the pass out of reach of his target, Kylan Mays. Good atmosphere here on a Friday night in Crestview. Suppose you should always expect a good atmosphere when you're in this gym, as Mitch Temple gets to. Good job on the dribble drive, squaring the shoulders up, protecting the basketball and finishing. Open three from Columbus Grove, that's good. Kyle Hopkins with the basket. Etzler the other way, blocked from behind. And that's last touched by the Knights. A lot of contact inside right there. Grove got lucky. The defender turned his back to his defender and gave up a dribble drive. Coach Etzler wants a foul and referee says nope. Clean contact. Barraza brings it across the timeline. 18 to 14, Crestview leads 27 and ticking on the clock here in the first quarter. Here's Barraza, gives it up for Evan Sauter. Now Best. Best lost the handle, had it tipped away. Now Sauter inside, pass tipped. Temple couldn't get to it. Sauter's gonna get a look at three. It's no good. Fight for the rebound, and that's last touch by Columbus Grove. Got a pretty high quality shot right there to end the first quarter. Point nine on the clock. Chance for a heave if Crestview wants. They throw a bounce pass into the front court. Shot at the buzzer, no good. And so, the entertaining first quarter comes to an end with Crestview on top, 18 to 14 over the Columbus Grove Bulldogs as we step aside. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN.
Today's instant replay is sponsored by Union Bank. Union Bank committed to you. Today's premier sponsor for the Crestview Knights is Carry Insurance in Grover Hill, proudly investing in our community and youth programs. That's Carry Insurance. Pretty nice close right there to the end of the quarter for Mr. Etzler and the Knights. What do we say, 18 to five after a 9-0 start by Grove. Couldn't ask for any better play the first two, two and a half minutes for Columbus Grove. And then uh, had a young man that uh, got hot from behind the arc and banged in four in a row. And first thing you knew, it was nine nothing, then it was 12 to nine. And his shooting ability, you know, built the confidence level up for the home ball club. And they extended that thing to a four point lead after one quarter. And if you're wondering, there's an issue with the clock right now. They have it, they have the switch flipped down to stop clock, but it continues to run. And so they're gonna reset the scoreboard here in Crestview. But you're absolutely right, Nate Lickley went nuts. Four for four on four straight possessions from three point range for Lickley. And then at the other end, he got a block, he got a rebound. And on offense, well, then they he got an they, assist. Yeah, they chased him, you know, off the three-point line and went to double him, and sure enough, he threw a nice bounce pass under the bucket for a teammate for an easy deuce. Now pass inside. That's good from Ren Sheets. Yeah, coming in tonight, he's averaging, uh, what, 73% on two-point field goal attempts, and if they can continue to give him that look, he's going to have a high percentage again tonight. Barraza passes outside to Evan Sauter. 20 to 14 the score on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Here's Kyle Hopkins guarded by Lickley. Good tight defense from Lickley. Now he switches on to Zach Reynolds. Reynolds drops it for Sauter. Sauter dribbles off his own foot and it's taken away. Ends up with Drew Nielsen. Now Temple, a little fake, passes to Hunter. Hunter might have gotten away with a travel, but play continues. And that one loose. And the jump ball possession stays with Columbus, or goes back to Columbus Grove, excuse me. Both these ball clubs doing a really good job with help, help side defense. You know, Grove's, one of their specialties is, is to open the floor up and do a lot of dribble drive action. Grove's doing a really good job edge and helping and recovering and down the same thing on this end of the floor. Grove's doing a good job also doing that. Sauter over to Cook. Cook patiently waiting, now sends it inside with the pass too low. It was intended for Kyle Hopkins. So the ball back to the Knights. You know, Coach Sauter realizes this is a process. You know, third game of the year, late start because of you know the success of the football program, and it's just going to be a, a minute by minute, possession by possession uh, game for these guys. Crestview playing well on offense as well, which makes it really tough for your team to stay engaged. But a good job defensively taking that one away. Sauter goes inside to Cook. That's good position from Cook. Not able to finish at the basket. Second attempt, no good. That's Ren Sheets inside on defense. Floater up and no good. And we've got an offensive foul. That's going to be called against Cook, I believe. Yeah, I think they got him on the push on the rebound. I think that's more of a frustration foul. You know, he missed the drop step, got a rebound, went back up against Sheets and his length with the left hand, left it short, and then you know, got a push in the middle of the back on Sheets. That's, I think that's more of a frustration than anything. Four team fouls against Columbus Grove in the half. Crestview back to work on offense. Sheets with the back door, goes up. Excuse me, that's Lickley as he scores off the pass from Mitch Temple. Now a quick pass ahead for Barraza. Barraza can't finish. Columbus Grove struggling right now as Temple will get called for the foul, the third against Crestview. The first against Mitch Temple. 
Coach Etzler not happy with transition defense right there. Need a quick substitution. That ball kicked away. Temple, the culprit. And that's the tough part about being a coach's kid right there as Gavin gets some instruction, we'll say, from his father, Doug. You take it and you move on and you play. Absolutely. Columbus Grove back to work, Tad Cook. You know, Grove has had some great looks. There's a nice look. Just can't get him to fall, partner. It's Cook missing with the left hand as Temple Passes out to Lickley. Can he do it again? Five for five. Nate Lickley. 15 points, all from deep. That pass tipped away. Inbound, sent over the top, it's knocked away. Cressy gets it back, Jarrett Harding to the basket and the easy finger roll off the glass. Right now, Coach Sauter letting his team play through this adversity, it's taken away again. Harding to the basket and tries the dunk, doesn't go and that will not make Coach Etzler happy. Barraza off the screen, loses the handle, jump ball, stays, or excuse me, that goes back to Crestview. So Columbus Grove gives it back. Yeah, the intensity level that Crestview's you know, possessing right now has definitely been the, the turning point here in the second quarter. Any ball screen that uh, Grove's trying to execute or run, they're just trapping the, the basketball and rotating it, and uh, it's giving Grove problems right now. Here's Etzler, tries to hit Sheets on the roll. Sheets able to grab the loose ball. Now up to Temple. Etzler to Harding, now Temple. Temple with some space going left. Goes up, he's fouled on the shot and not a good foul there as he was under the basket. Really bad position for a shot, but he gets bailed out and gets two at the line. I think that was Barraza got him across the arm. That is the first foul against Trenton Barraza. Third against, or fifth, excuse me, against the Columbus Grove Bulldogs as the free throw goes in. Mitch Temple, the 6'2 senior guard, gets both to go. Crestview, 29 to 14. They trailed nine nothing at one point in this game. What a run they are on. Cressy going back to a 1-3-1. Sauter attacks that 1-3-1, kicks it outside. Ball goes off the foot of Columbus Grove and Harding gets another layup. It's off of Best who couldn't get the handle. 31-14. Still in that 1-3-1, one, one. Columbus Grove's got to figure it out. Sauter over to Best. Best tries to go inside, Ren Sheets knocks it away. Now Temple drops it for Sheets, uh, Lickley, excuse me. Good job closing out by Sauter on Lickley. Temple gets an open look at three, that's short. Etzler tracks down the rebound, gives it back to Temple. Sheets thought about one, gets his man in the air. Now Harding, good ball movement from Crestview. Harding, two-pointer, his foot was on the line, doesn't go anyway. Rebound tipped out and grabbed by Evan Sauter. 13-0 run right here in the second quarter for Crestview. Skip pass, knocked away by Temple, it'll stay with Columbus Grove on the far side as Keegan Bain checks in. Lickley will take a seat, replaced by Carson Hunter for Crestview. 
I think so much, some, somewhat of a surprise, excuse me, but Crestview going to that 1-3-1, but uh, it's definitely stymied Columbus Grove in their ability to attack the basket. Three-pointer on the way, that's no good. It's the kind of shot you want to hit when a team's playing a zone like that. That pass kicked away. That was a really good look. Nice rebound there by Sheets for the Knights. Ball in for Sheets, gives it up to Temple. Sheets will get it back under the basket, turns, goes up, and no good. Good defense inside by Kylan Mays. Under two minutes to play in the first half. Hunter tips the pass away. Bain over to Barraza. Sauter. Really nowhere to pass. Now he gets it over to Barraza. Yeah, they've got to attack the thing and split the seams. Barraza to Sauter. Sauter spins, gets a good look, but not able to finish. Now a quick pass ahead. Here's Temple, or Hunter, excuse me. Hunter had a lot of contact on the shot. Doesn't get the call. Foul up top by Jarrett Harding. Fans never like those calls, but I'll tell you what, a lot of times what they'll see, partner, is they'll see the, the right arm or the left arm touch the ball cleanly, but what they miss is the other arm that's on a hip or into a chest. Exactly. And I think right there, a little bit too much contact on the arm. You got to go from underneath. Not over the top. Whenever you go over the top, you're going to get called for it. Now Barraza lost the handle, and it's almost taken away. Columbus Grove gets it back. Big block off the backboard by Carson Hunter. Bulldogs get it back. Inside goes Mays. He can't finish. My goodness, that basket just closed right now for the Bulldogs. Temple inside gets a little bump, sends it out to Carson Hunter. This pass tipped away by Barraza, so it stays with the Knights near the corner. 46 on the clock. Hetzler over the top to Easterling. Now Easterling posts up, and he gets fouled on the entry pass, number six against the Bulldogs. I think that's on Mays, a six-foot sophomore. Boy's not, got a nice body to him, doesn't he, for a sophomore? He sure does. Thick. It's the first foul against Mays. Etzler off a screen, now goes inside. That's Harding. Easterling, mid-range jumper, no good. And a great box out on the back side. Sure was. Keegan Bame with the box. Doesn't get the reward with the rebound, but that's a play that coaches love to see. 15 on the clock, Sauter, guarded by Hunter, Barraza, six on the clock, Sauter goes baseline, Sauter tries the skip pass and a good job there by Mitch Temple, that's what you're taught, you see a guy go baseline, take away that corner pass. Yep, dribble baseline, slide baseline, and the defender did a really nice job, like you said, sliding to the baseline, getting the deflection. 1.2 now on the clock. Maybe. Referee's going to have a quick chat. Again, we're having a little bit of difficulties with the clock. 1.4. Sauter gets a three at the buzzer. It's too long. And the first half comes to a close. 31 to 14, Crestview on top as the teams hit the locker room and we step aside. Second half coming up after this on WOSN.
Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Hawker Drywall and Plastery. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Union Bank. Union Bank committed to you. Welcome back for the start of the second half here in Crestview. Evan Skilleter, Darren Gilbert with you tonight. And it was a big, big second quarter for Crestview. They trailed this game 9-0 at one point and now lead 31 to 14 as Columbus Grove goes inside. Tad Cook's shot is blocked. Columbus Grove didn't score a single basket in the second quarter there, Darren Gilbert. No, you know, and you gotta give Crestview a lot of credit defensively. They had a lot of deflections and turnovers and, and Grove really struggled putting the ball in the bucket. They had a lot of good looks, but again, Crestview and their defensive ability. And as you seen one right there, we just missed a four footer if you're Grove. And, Cook got an over the, the back call there. But you know what was unusual is Crestview normally comes out in that first quarter. And I think they, they've outscored their opponents 20 in the first quarter, in the third quarter, and they got punched in the mouth early by Columbus, Columbus Grove, so to speak, and it took them a while to respond. Nate Lickley with five three-pointers tonight misses the first, or has his first miss of, miss of the night right there. Five He's, for six from beyond the yard. Take him out? Yeah, they should. I think that's it for him. <laughs> Great first half for Mr. Lickley. Tad Cook turns with the left, can't score. Temple grabs the rebound. Temple picks up his dribble. Good transition defense that time from Columbus Grove. I think in Cook's situation inside, that length of sheets is they're taking away his strong hand and making him use that weak hand. And nice defense there by Cook, though, walling up on Sheets. The sheets lost it on the way up, tried to just tap it in and went hard off the glass. Now Barraza for Columbus Grove dribbles up top. That pass inside, knocked away by the long arms of Ren Sheets. Lickley is going to try again. That goes. Six three-pointers for Nate Lickley. 21 points. Now Zach Reynolds sends it over to the freshman Landon Best. Best picks it up. Sheets knocks it away. Tad Cook extends the arm on Sheets. That'll be number three against Cook. Number two against Columbus Grove with the half. And these Bulldogs are certainly getting frustrated here. Plays hard, but you got to keep those wings in. Referees have a quick chat, and now we will continue play as Etzler sends a, over the top to Temple. Temple with the left and a good looking bucket there as he waited for the help to come over, but it never did. Nice looking left handed finger roll by that young man. Temple guarding tightly up top. Good job by Best getting around him. Sure was. Now Temple, too much contact. Yeah, they're trying to turn the pressure up on the freshman. And you know, this kind of game situation is only going to make him better and make this Columbus Grove team better. Ball sent in by Kyle Hopkins. This is Trenton Barraza. Barraza, a tremendous athlete, only a sophomore. Great job so far this season on the basketball court. Tremendous on the football field and that one blocked by Sheets and goes out of bounds. Columbus Grove with a nice playoff run, ultimately falling to the state champ, Marion Local Flyers. I had Van Wert last week, and they were in the same position, you know, not getting their basketball legs underneath. And it's going to take a while for the Bulldogs to get that basketball legs. And when they do, you know, Coach Sauter runs some really good stuff offensively, and they practice exceptionally hard and break things down. They're going to be okay. Cook goes inside, misses again. That might have been tipped by Sheets. Here's Temple the other way. Lickley now. Inside to Sheets. Sheets against Cook. Nothing there. Kicks it outside. Temple 
Temple attacked the closeout, lost the nice handle. Nice job with the help and recover right there, trying to see who that was. And now a foul on the layup. That was Zach Reynolds. Did a nice job defensively and then come right down the floor. Got inside, used his body and positioned himself. Took it up strong, got fouled. They got Sheets. They did indeed Sheets with his first foul too now against Cressy this half. Free throw up and good. It breaks the scoring drought for Columbus Grove. Kylan Mays checks in. Connor Sheets checking in on the other side. Reynolds gets them both, 36-16. 20 point lead for Crestview. They send Jarrett Harding to the scorer's table, ready to check in as Crestview gets going on offense. Lickley catches, goes inside. Sheets, Sheets up with the right hand. He's fouled. That's Connor Sheets. They have Wren and Connor. Connor, the one fouled there. He'll go to the line. It's the second foul called against Kylan Mays. Yeah, that one, he was in vertical. He, his upper body was tilted towards the offensive player, and that's the reason why he got called for that foul. Harding will replace Carson Hunter. It's the third foul against Columbus Grove of the half, by the way. Second from Sheets up. That's no good, but an offensive rebound. Harding, who just checked in, gives it back to Temple. Three-pointer, no good. Sheets with the rebound. Sheets over to Lickley in the mid-range jumper. Good. The offensive rebounds are killers right now, and when you give second and third possessions, they're going to come back to get you in, in that possession it did for the Bulldogs. Here's Barraza as Cressy switched the screen. Now some good footwork inside, but a block from behind by Temple. Junior Zach Reynolds trying to get to the bucket. Got a nice little up and under there, but just didn't extend his body. Instead of going towards the basket with his jump, he tried to go vertical and didn't give him enough space. Let the defender get his hand on it. Barraza back to work. Barraza, a little give and go with Mays. Lost the handle, might have been knocked away by Etzler. Etzler over to Harding. Harding's pass knocked away. Good transition defense. Sure was. That was Keegan Bain getting back and now it's taken back by Crestview. Bain will get called for the foul. Number four against the Bulldogs of the half. Number one against Bain. 3.22 on the clock. Third quarter of action, here's Etzler. Lickley, flare screen. That one's no good, make it five for seven. And Crestview almost able to take it away, but Isaac Klein was on the line. Barraza crosses the timeline. Three minutes and change to play in the third quarter. May slips the screen, but they go the other way. Three-pointer on the way from Reynolds. Rebound grabbed by Klein. Here's Harding dribbling up top. Has it knocked away, gets it right back. Crestview's trying to get some open shots on the perimeter, but Columbus Grove doing a nice job switching some screens and making sure they don't get any open looks. Yeah, they're battling, aren't they? They're down 20 and they're still competing and battling. Etzler tries to send it inside. It's knocked away by Bame. Now Lickley's gonna try a corner three. That's no good. Nice rebound pulled in by Reynolds. Reynolds outside to Bame. Someone's got to talk to Coach Sauter about those numbers on the jerseys. That little thin gray outline is not going to do it for most places. Fortunately, we're close enough to see those numbers. 
inside and a nice little scoop layup, but it's no good. That was Evan Sauter. Lickley with board there for the carom for the Knights. Inside they go, Connor Sheets turns, scores, and the foul. Good job posting up. He got Mays on his backside. Mays took a gamble, missed the basketball, give up the drop step, and going to get the end one here. Mays with the slap across the shoulder. Number three against Mays. Five now against the Bulldogs as they send a few subs into the game. Carson Hunter coming in for Crestview. You know, you made the comment earlier, just looking at Groves roster, one senior, Tad Cook. All this experience is going to pay off for Grove, not only this season, but for future years. Yeah, and one thing you mentioned is, you know, all this pressure from Crestview. Games like this for a young team that may not have a shot at the NWC title. You never want to say that about a team early on, but games like this, like you said, you, you carry stuff like this into the rest of the season. You learn early on what you have to work on, and right now Columbus Grove just needs to figure out how to get the ball into the bucket around the rim. Nice little fake from Carson Hunter. Not able to finish. Now he goes up. He's fouled on that shot. You know, the one thing about Coach Sauter, and I've worked with him for years, and and I know him personally and his coaching staff, and they are not going to give up on these kids, and they want to be playing their best basketball at the end of the year. And, you know, th this is an unfortunate situation, you know, um, but it's part of life. I mean, you come from a from a school district that, that got to the Final Four, which is a heck of an accomplishment for the community and for the school, and, and, and you just roll with it, and, and you roll out the basketball and you play, and not complain about it, but it's going to pay dividends like, you know, down the road this season and especially come tournament time. Absolutely. 42-16 the score. Columbus Grove with just two points in the last two quarters. Make it four. Nice layup there from Evan Sauter. Sure was. Nice blow by there. High and soft off the glass on the finish. Two-pointer on the way. That's no good from Kellen Putman. Good box out there by Mays. And correction, it's four points in the last two quarters. All four of them in this particular quarter. And now a foul up top as Isaac Klein tried to come in and grab the ball, but instead nearly runs over Bame. 37 seconds on the clock here in the third quarter. Landon Best dribbling outside. Now into the elbow, his pass taken away. Carson Hunter, Hunter down the right side, now stops. Easterling inside. Easterling, good footwork, but doesn't have enough on the shot. 10 seconds to go. That one almost taken away. Now we'll have a jump ball. Arrow pointing toward Crestview. We'll have 6.4. Crestview doing a really good job of hedging, helping, recovering, whether it be a ball screen or a dribble attack situation. They got beat early on a couple back doors, but since then. Hunter shoots off the backboard, almost gets it to go, but it's no good. And that's how the third quarter ends. Crestview. On top, 42 to 18 as we step aside. Fourth quarter after this on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. Today's premier sponsor for the Crestview Knights is Cary Insurance in Grover Hill, proudly investing in our youth programs and our communities. Welcome back to Ray Exler Gymnasium, where Crestview leads 42 to 18 over the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Northwest Conference showdown tonight. 
And since the first couple minutes, it's been all Crestview Knights here. Evan Skilleter and Darren Gilbert with you. Pass tipped away. Columbus Grove struggling, didn't score any points in the second quarter, only had four in the third quarter. I really like this 1-3-1 one, one he throws out there. He's got some length on top of sheets. And then when you throw in Easterling there into the middle and your athleticism with uh, Hunter. And it's a good look. Tough to move the ball around the perimeter, but a good look right there by Evan Sauter. Nice execution there by the visitors. Sauter has five points. First points of the fourth quarter go to the Bulldogs. Now a foul on the entry pass. And if that's Tad Cook, it's his fourth. I think it was Barraza. It was indeed. Good eyes there, Darren. And with that, it'll be one and one for Nasir Easterling. Kylan Mays checks back in. You know, another point is this is great for Columbus Grove to be able to work on your substitutions. I noticed he's going big now. He's got, you know, Mays in there with Cook. Columbus Grove is miss missing a key player due to injury. Bo Burnesser, a 6'3 junior, tore his ACL back earlier this year and just got cleared to practice this week. He's in uniform tonight, won't play. No reason for him to do so. There's that length presenting the problem. That one's taken away. Temple passes ahead here. Sheets goes up. He's fouled. Basket no good. That'll be against Tad Cook. It will be his fourth and number eight against the Bulldogs. Ren Sheets slow to get up. It's a hard foul. Those are always dangerous, and they look really awkward, but those are two big guys going up against each oh, other yeah. going up. So. Yep, you got Long and Lanky going up against a big, bulky, physically strong kid trying to keep from getting scored on. Good to see Sheets up, bouncing up off the floor. First free throw from Sheets, no good. This one, he's got to get his legs into it. That was awful flat. Get up on them toes, back down on the heels. That one was even more short. Mm -hmm. as Mays pulls in the rebound. Good job splitting it right there by Sauter. That pass knocked away. Columbus Grove tracks it down. Hunter with the deflection on the backside wing. Pass inside, Etzler takes it away, but his pass too quick for Temple. Excuse me, that's Carson Hunter. So Columbus Grove gets it back. Sauter, outside, that was Kyle Hopkins. Inside to Cook and blocked by Easterling. And kind of a lazy pass there as it's taken away, but not gonna be happy about that. Little underhand Magic Johnson looking pass that certainly doesn't have the results that Irvin had back in the day. Well, give Sauter a lot of credit. He was in a three-on-one situation. He did what he could do and got his foot on that to stop the possession. Good job by that young man. Here's Ren Sheets over the top to Easterling. Easterling catches and finishes. Nice high-low nice high execution there by the Knights. Nice pass, nice finish. Connor Sheets over to check in as Columbus Grove still trying to figure out this defense as Easterling called for a foul. Got him with the reach behind. It's number one against Easterling, four against Crestview with a half. Now, get our first look at Wesson Ludwig. He checks in with Connor Sheets. 6-2 senior. Ball goes in over the top for Mays. He gives it to Barraza. Cressy switching into a man-to-man -man defense here. 
Cook up top. Cook, nowhere to go with it. Now it gives it to Barraza. Barraza goes up, off balance shot, no good. Cook with the rebound. Cook backs inside and Pretty finishes. Move. Nice strong move by the young man. Cook with his first basket of the night. 45-23 now the score on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. There's a pass over the top. Connor Sheets grabs it, and I think he shuffled his feet. He did indeed. Yeah, the pass was a little bit high. He got his hands on it, but he shuffled his feet. Like you said, he tried to gather it. Under five minutes to play now. Barraza over to Mays. Mays tries the three. Mays gets it. Big three by that young man. Coach Sauter applauded that with nice execution. A double high screen with a roll and then the pop action. A couple more of those and Columbus Groves right back in this one. They trail 45-26. There's a steal. Evan Sauter takes it away. Bulldogs come down the court. Here's Barraza. I think he thought about the three. Now puts it on the deck. Pass tipped away and Ludwig with the steal. Nice play by that senior. Temple spins, goes up, puts it in. Nice job inside by Connor Sheets, sealing off his man and creating that lane. 47-26 the score. Shot by Sauter, no good. Rebound tipped over to Carson Hunter. Hunter got a little carried away there. Good play Good there defense. by Sauter. Yep. Sauter outside now, dribbles to the corner. They go inside to Cook. Cook drops it off for Mays. Mays lost the handle. Right idea, just a tough angle. And Temple all the way to the bucket for the layup. And a timeout taken by Crestview. It's a 30 second timeout. We'll take it as well. 321 to go here in the fourth quarter. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Union Bank. Union Bank is committed to you. Welcome back for the final action of the night. 3.21 to go on the clock. 49-26, Crestview on top of Columbus Grove. Evan Skilleter and Darren Gilbert with you tonight. Megan Sherrick to our right on the camera. What a great job as always. Columbus Grove with a tremendous game here. They trailed 9-0 to start this game. I'm, I'm sorry, Crestview with a tremendous game. They trailed 9-0 to start this game and then have gone on a massive run since. got a heck of a matchup coming up the 23rd. They're going you know, to get in the bus and drive over to Delta St. John's. Mays goes up with the right, and Cook will be charged with the foul, and that will be number five for Tad Cook. Really good job, though, with the high-low execution there. So we'll have free throws. That's team foul number nine against the Bulldogs. That will send Kellen Putman to the line. It's the last Northwest Conference matchup for Crestview until January 6th when they take on Bluffton on the road. And the loose ball stays with Crestview. 3.03 on the clock. Yeah. 
Knights will inbound right in front of their student section who have been nice and loud tonight. Here's Drew Nielsen. Nielsen outside for Isaac Klein. Klein's pass over to Ludwig, almost goes out. He's able to grab it. Nielsen over to Klein. Nielsen gets it back. Cut off as he tries to go baseline. Now Ludwig backs his way down, turns, fires, no good. Best with the rebound there for the Bulldogs. I want to thank our sponsors again. The scoreboard was sponsored by Hawker Drywall, our instant replay sponsored by Union Bank. And our premier sponsor tonight was Carey Insurance in Grover Hill. And also stay tuned after this game for our Stolly Insurance Hustle Award winner. You can check out our YouTube page and see highlights of past winners, tonight's winner. Also find past broadcasts that get uploaded to YouTube now. Uh, about a week after each contest, they're uploaded to YouTube so you can go back into the archives and watch some old matchups. Free throw short there by Zach Reynolds. Foul was against Kellen Putman. Tommy Hefner checks in. Second free throw is good. 49-27 now the score on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Two minutes to play. Go inside for Ludwig. Ludwig backs down, goes over the back shoulder, up off the glass and in. A little crab dribble, spin and lock. A nice defense by Mays, but a better shot there by Ludwig. Now an off balance layup goes in by Sauter. Good drive by that young man, took it up strong against Ludwig, who was walling up and finished it. One twenty-five on the clock, Isaac Klein sends it over to Drew Nielsen. Now Tommy Hefner, his first touch of the night. Crestview swings it around back to Klein. Klein inside. Pass to Ludwig's tipped away by Mays. Now Reynolds fouled on his way down the floor. Pardon me, that is Landon Best. Number six against Crestview with 105 on the clock. They got Nielsen on that one, I believe, with the reach. And you said it at a break. You said you didn't think Coach Sauter would take any timeouts trying to get his guys in shape for the season. And so far, you're right. He has not taken one timeout in this matchup. And both these guys have been doing it long enough. They know the, the tricks of the trade, so to speak, and what is best for their programs. And Turnaround shot by Nielsen, no good. Fan favorite, when he checked in, the whole stadium stood up. Yeah, I got caught in between saying something, watching him take that shot attempt right there. But uh, yeah, I, I just, something tells me that it was, it's, you know, his philosophy tonight was, to, you know, just to, to, to get him acclimated and get him up and down the floor and let him play through things, so to speak. Some more free throws at the end of this game with 27 on the clock. He's always been a big believer the kids play the game and you coach it during the week and then when it comes time for game nights, they, they have to play through both the good and the bad. Absolutely. The trail 51 to 33, 15 on the clock. Don't know if Cressy will take another shot here. That one's blocked, and it's actually last touched by Nielsen. But Coach Etzler, I don't think gets enough credit. You know, his JV team is really, really good, and you know, his varsity team, he's got some tough games coming up, but I know he's gonna be prepared. Off balance shot, no good. Mays gets the rebound, and the buzzer sounds in Crestview. 
win this one 51 to 33. We will step aside, but final thoughts and our Stolly Insurance Hustle Award coming up after this on WOSN. Check out the WOSN YouTube page for highlights of tonight's winner of the Stolly Insurance Hustle Award. And tonight, I'll tell you what, there are a lot of players we could probably choose from, Darren Gilbert, but Nathan Lickley and the way that he got things going for this team, I think he deserves it. Oh, he just, he, he single-handedly carried them. You know, they struggled coming out of the shoot at nine to nothing, and then he hit those four in a row. It was definitely the difference maker because the, the, the game just changed hands there and the momentum changed, and you could start seeing the home team getting a little more confident defensively and, you know, well-deserved honor by that young man. Again, your final tonight, Crestview 51, Columbus Grove 33. Columbus Grove, only three games. This is, was only their third game of the season. We talked about it during the broadcast, but they had a long run in the football playoffs. And Crestview, this was their sixth game, believe it or not. So you can kind of tell that Columbus Grove didn't really have their feet under them at times. But overall, they kind of came back. They slowed that run down, played a better second half. What are your final thoughts here, partner? Well, I just think early on they they executed, you know, to what the coaching staffs asked them to do. And uh, that's all you can ask for. They got some high-quality shots. They couldn't get them to drop. But the kids never, you know, they never quit. They kept competing. They listened to the coaching staff. You know, I think the, you know, we talked about this at break here. I think the 1-3-1 one, one that Coach Etzler, you know, put in in the second quarter, I think that stymied a little bit the attack by Columbus Grove. Maybe that's something they haven't seen yet, you know, on tape or, or haven't practiced against it, but that's going to be something that's going to, you know, pay, pay huge dividends uh, down the road for them, for Crestview. You know, they've got, you know, to take a couple days off and then they're going to get ready to, to go down and play St. John's. And, you know, you look at their schedule, it's not a cupcake. They got St. John's, Kaleida, Ottaville, Bluffton, and then Arlington. You know, it, it's going to be a, a tough battle for, you know, Coach Etzler and, and the Crestview Knights. And, uh, but they, you know, they've got, they've got a bright, bright season in front of them. And I think Grove, you know, once they get their football legs underneath them and, and get into the second half of the season, we always think of three seasons before you know, Christmas is, is one part of the season, and then you finish the season up, which is your second part, then you get into your tournament run. And I think both of these teams come tournament time, you know, could be dangerous. Absolutely. Thanks, Darren. And I want to thank the Crestview Athletic Department for their hospitality tonight. And as always, want to thank you, the viewer, for tuning in to High School Basketball on WOSN. One more time from Crestview. It's the Knights 51, the Columbus Grove Bulldogs 33. For our crew of Megan and Kelsey and my partner, Darren Gilbert, I've been Evan Skilleter signing off. Have a great night and God bless.